think we're ready. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Beatrice Quinn, and I'm the writer and creator of Euroquision. I'm an American fan of Eurovision, and I have been following the contest with a very passionate dedication since 2016. You may already be familiar with my face or my voice from my videos concerning Israel's participation in Eurovision 2024. As of writing and filming this open letter to the European Broadcasting Union on December 26th, no disciplinary or punitive action has been taken against Israel's broadcaster Khan, despite the ongoing suffering of innocent civilians, destruction of homes, churches, and hospitals, and the continuous global media presence Israel uses over internet and television to spread hateful, fear-mongering, and often false information about its actions and the targets of those actions. For the past two months, I and dozens of other Eurovision lovers have worked continuously to bring attention to the senseless violence as well as Eurovision's inaction concerning Israel. So I wanted to take the time here to fully write out and elaborate my intentions behind these efforts. These efforts being public informational documents containing contact information for public broadcasters of Eurovision competing countries, a global survey asking people their honest opinions about Israel's involvement in Eurovision, and much, much more work that's been done thanks to the help of international friendships and connections that I've made because of a shared love of Eurovision. I want to fully and honestly state my intentions behind all of this work here and now. When I mention Eurovision's lack of disciplinary or punitive action towards Israel, I do not say this to express any kind of desire to actually punish Israel's broadcaster Khan, the artists wishing to represent their country in Eurovision, or the innocent civilians who just want to see their country compete like they have been for the last several decades. I do not want Eurovision to take the role of some metaphorical moral police for the rest of the world when in reality, it's just a song contest. It is not Eurovision or the EBU's job to monitor and punish countries for the actions of their governing bodies or militaries. What I am asking Eurovision and the EBU at large is to be brave. I am asking you, I'm begging you, and I'm pleading for you to be brave and do what countries, governments, and regular people all around the world are refusing to do, which is do something. We live in a world where here in America, citizens can ask each other to do something as painfully simple as not give their money to McDonald's or Starbucks. And for thousands of people, that's just too much to do. And above us, the inaction and complacency only gets worse because our own elected officials are refusing to listen or even look at those protesting and begging for the violence to just stop as we are constantly reminded by the hour and by the minute of the public suffering of innocent people. Families are trapped under the tons of concrete of their homes that no longer exist. We see their arms and their legs protruding out from rubble and stone. Parents speak to journalists and they hold up individual limbs of their now dead children, knowing full well that these journalists are the only people left to document their suffering before they too are killed either indiscriminately from bombs and artillery or even worse, assassinated by military snipers, indicating a specific and sought out killing of those documenting what is happening before our very eyes. The world is drowning in inaction. It's drowning in ignorance and complacency. Once again, it's not the job of a song contest to be the almighty arbiter of justice, dealing out punishments while other countries just get to sing three minute songs. I'm asking you, Eurovision and the EBU, to refuse this willful ignorance that's just so easy to accept. It's never too late to say the words that need to be said or take the action that needs to be taken. I and the whole world know that Eurovision is a celebration of music and culture, and it's a contest for broadcasters, not governments. I understand this, and I appreciate this. Truthfully, I do. You've also acknowledged 
the tendency for viewers to draw comparisons to Russia's exclusion in 2022 after their invasion of Ukraine, and you've stated that these two situations are not similar. I will gladly say that I agree with this, and I agree with you. This is not like the Russia and Ukraine situation. This is worse. This is much, much worse, especially from the standpoint of Eurovision as a contest. In your public statement that you shared on December 8th, 2023, you stated that the Israeli public broadcaster complies with all competition rules, and on the matter of Russia, the governing bodies of the EBU had decided to exclude Russia where they were to compete together with fellow country Ukraine. This statement is a sobering reminder of two facts. The first, political influence in Eurovision is not a specific rule with a specific punishment should a country violate that rule. If it were a rule, there would be a clear and specific parameter and definition to abide by in the decision to exclude Russia, but there wasn't. As you said, it was a decision made by governing bodies, the people in charge that discussed and decided for one reason or another to exclude Russia. So if remaining apolitical was le a legitimate rule, it would have a definition that it could follow and a specific punishment for violating it. Consider one of the simplest rules of Eurovision. A song can only be up to three minutes in length. Now consider if you were to change or rephrase that rule to, songs should remain punctual and modest in runtime. The question then becomes, how long is too long? No one knows specifically, and worse yet, a song could be three minutes and two seconds and be labeled as a violation of the rule, while a song three and a half minutes long could be just fine, simply because a governing body of people decided it was too long, and now that song faces punishment. The second fact being, matters of geopolitical violence only matter when two countries are competing at the same time. Which I agree, that is something that is definitely playing a larger role in all of this. No country should be forced to compete with their aggressor state. Sadly, you've stated and confirmed the double standard by which you make decisions like Russia's exclusion from the contest. Simply by the fact that Israel is a member of the EBU and can compete in Eurovision, and the country and peoples that they are terrorizing can't compete. This means that there's less reason or pressure to exclude Israel from Eurovision. And to this day, the majority of Israel as a country remains safe and unaltered in comparison to the violence and destruction that their government has carried out. Within its still functioning country, news stations, media outlets, both physical and digital, and cultural media such as music and entertainment remain unhindered in their efforts of broadcasting half-truths about this violence being carried out and claiming that their actions are purely only in self-defense. Amidst all of this, the rest of the world continues to do little to nothing in response. My own country, against the overwhelming majority of the United Nations, has repeatedly vetoed any chance of a ceasefire, something that could even just slightly reduce the amount of pain and suffering. And so that leaves me, Beatrice Quinn, here, alone in my room, in a home that's still standing, in talking into a phone, that still has connection to the internet and the ability to contact my loved ones. And I'm asking for someone to just do something. I don't need Eurovision to fix all of this. I know that's impossible. We all know that's impossible. Just like we all know that citizens and elected officials alike are only trying to find reasons to not speak up, to not take action, or not even look at what's going on. And the closest Eurovision has come to doing any of this is using a bunch of children to sing We Are the World, a song that is not about world peace. Let me repeat that. We Are the World is not about world peace. It is a song written with incredibly specific context, which was in response to a famine that many parts of Africa were facing at the time. The song explicitly asks its listeners to look at the suffering that others are going through and not just simply standing by or waiting for something to get better or someone else to take action. Even when the song was re-released in 2010, this was in response to an earthquake that devastated millions of lives in Haiti. Once again, the song asked people to pay attention and take action to help people that are suffering. My point here being, if Eurovision Song Contest 
can grossly misunderstand even the most obvious statement a song is trying to make, then no one in the world has any hope for you as a contest or organization to adequately make decisions regarding world events. Maybe ever again, should you choose to continue being inactive during a public display of war crimes, crimes against humanity, and the death of innocent people who don't even have the ability to try and compete in Eurovision like Israel can. So, if anyone has listened to this message all the way through, you have my deepest and sincerest of thanks. I understand that none of this is easy, not for anyone. It's not supposed to be easy. It's hard to be brave and it's hard to take action. That's why the word brave exists. So do not punish Israel by excluding them from a song contest. Be bold and brave and say, while the rest of the world tries to remain dormant, that Eurovision won't be. You were brave for excluding Russia in 2022. You were brave for hosting the contest on behalf of Ukraine in Liverpool. Please do not undo all of that by deciding here and now to be complacent. Thank you.